Hi, it's Kai, and in this lesson, I'll show you how to create a code blue mood for your winter photos. I will be using Camera Raw. If you're on Lightroom, it's totally fine. They're pretty much the same. All right, let's get started. The first thing I like to do is I like to adjust the curves. For this image, we are going to raise the leftmost tail up and then lower the rightmost tail. What this does is that it brings up the pure darks as well as lowering the pure whites. Next, we make a point here and we drag it down. This will give us mood. You don't want it too dark. What you want is something like this, where there's still detail, but there's also a nice fade. If you're having problems adjusting the curve, then you might be in the wrong tab. You want to be in the second one, not the first one. Now we're going to head over to color grading. If you are using a older Photoshop or camera raw, the settings are horizontal. This one is called color grading. The old one is called split toning. Not sure why they made the change. I actually prefer the old one. The new one has midtones, but the old one does not. Don't worry about it. Go to shadows and we're going to choose a cold color. If you aren't sure about the exact hue, just put 214 into this box. And for saturation, slowly raise the slider. Normally, I like to do something around 10, but for this image, even at 19, you see that it's not that blue. What we want is a nice strong color in the shadows. I think it will look good around 25. As for luminance, don't worry about it. If you do have midtones, then let's also adjust it. Let's give it a stronger blue, something that's closer to the purples. 227. Let's also increase the saturation. You will notice that only this section is actually changing. Just like the name, we are only changing the details that are in the middle of the dynamic range. I'm going to go with 12 and let's move on to highlights. Just like the others, we're going to give highlights a blue. Let's go with 204 and aqua blue. For the saturation of the highlights, look at the sky as well as the snow area. Something around 15 looks good. Now for a quick before and after. You can see the mood starting to come out and we're getting that color. After we finish color grading, we're going to go back to the basics. And the first thing I like to do is I like to reduce contrast. What this does is it brings out details in an image. I don't normally increase contrast because of the way my camera takes pictures. You can see that in the before, the contrast is quite strong. And afterwards, it's highlights and whites. Because we're editing in camera or Lightroom only, and we're not bringing this into Photoshop, I'm going to raise highlights. This will create contrast between the highlights and the shadows.
Let's go with 50. Raising the whites creates separation, and this causes contrast in the highlights. We are going to raise it until we see some nice contrast in this area. I think 40 looks good. And now on to shadows and blacks. There are three ways you can adjust these. You can increase shadows and decrease blacks, decrease shadows and increase blacks, or increase shadows and increase blacks. Let's say you're feeling adventurous and you pick increase shadows and increase blacks. This will take away the contrast in the darker areas. This method is really good in bringing out the details, but for our image, let's decrease shadows. Hmm. I think negative 18 for the shadows looks good. Now let's raise the blacks by a tiny bit. So far, so good. Next, let us adjust the temperature. Let's give the overall image a bit more of a blue. Let's also increase the exposure. This will give us that brightness as well as that extra touch of contrast. Now for vignette, it's right under the effects tab. If your thing looks something like this, just click the little triangle and it's going to expand it. The vignette is really going to enhance our mood. The darker the corner, the moodier the image. I will go with negative 35, highlight priority. The midpoint, think of it as how much vignette you want inside your image. Having it at zero just means that apart from the center, most of the image has a bit of vignette. For this image, I think I will go with 30. As for roundness, let's first visualize it. When it's zero, it looks like a picture frame. In the center, it kind of looks like a mirror you would hang on your wall. As you raise it to max, it starts to look like a circle. Because our image is rectangular, we want the mirror shape. As for feather, I'll probably keep it at 60-ish. Think of the slider as a gradient. At 100, it's at maximum, and at 0, there's no gradient. Don't worry about highlights because we're not really going to use it. It's just a blend mode where it kind of hides the effect of the vignette in brighter areas of the image. And we do not want that because we don't want that extra contrast in the top right corner. I'm just going to decrease vignette by a tiny bit, negative 40. This image is starting to come to life. And now for my favorite part, using the gradient tool. This allows us to create selective light and selective vignette. Let's darken the sky because in the initial image, you can see that this section is still quite bright. We don't want that because there's nothing up here that's interesting. 
this contrast is actually drawing attention away from the center. Drag and create a nice large oval. What you want to do is have the edge of this oval over the top right corner. What I did was I chose an exposure of negative 0.65. This darkens the top right corner. I decreased highlights and whites because this part is very bright. I am increasing blacks because we are trying to undo the decrease in exposure. Next, we will create another radio filter. We're just going to position it somewhere here. I noticed that the brightness of this point here is quite strong. So we're going to go back to curves and lower the rightmost point by a tiny bit. Back to the radio filters. Now let's add some light into our picture. Let's increase exposure to plus 0 0.35. Decrease highlights to negative 10. And for whites, we will decrease to negative 5. Black, I'm going to keep at plus 5. For shadows, let's go 0. I'm going to raise contrast to create some separation. Lastly, for clarity, we will go negative 15 to create a soft effect. Now let's apply this. Put it right in the center, rotate it, give it an oval shape by pushing the side down. Now we're going to create a second one. Think of it as the light shining in. This gradient of light will help guide the viewers into our image. I'm just going to decrease exposure by a tiny bit. Think of it as the light falling off as it enters the forest. Let us do one more final radio filter. Let's put it here, give it an oval shape and rotate it. Decrease the exposure by a tiny bit. Double check with before and after. The light here feels a bit strong. So let's do one last radio filter to fix it. This time we will lower exposure to zero and decrease highlights to negative 20 and lower whites to negative 10. Then just drag it over the bright patch we saw earlier. A quick before and after. I feel we can add one more light. Let's just increase exposure to plus 15, bring highlights to negative 5 and whites to negative 10. Then let's drag a long one. Rotate it so it kind of looks slanted and we will put this right in the middle. One more before and after. It looks good. And at this point, we are almost done. If I didn't put you to sleep and you made it this far, congratulations. We are two steps away from finishing. First one is saturation. To keep this video simple, we are not going to adjust vibrance. Slowly raise the bar. We want a nice blue. Plus 50 looks good. And these settings apply to my picture. So for your picture, the values might be different. Just keep an eye out on the image and adjust it accordingly. Next is sharpness. Because we aren't importing this into Photoshop and we're exporting it right away, I would sharpen this image quite a bit. There are two sliders to adjust texture and clarity. I personally don't like clarity and I will always reduce it. Because we lowered clarity by negative 10, we will increase texture by the same. 
think of it as thermodynamics. Energy can't be created or destroyed. <laughs> Finally, let's go into the details tab. This is actually a sharpness slider. Let me just zoom in so we can see the full effect. The default is set to plus 40. Because we're exporting this right away, for example, Instagram, we can go quite high. For this image, I'm going to stay at 100. What I recommend is also exporting another image at 40 sharpness. The thing about sharpness is once the image gets sharpened, you can't really ever go back and it's easier to sharpen a softer image. Lastly, I think this image needs a bit more contrast. To do that, we're going to the curves. Right now, it kind of looks like a line slanted down. Make a point a bit to the right of the center and raise it. We're going to create a S shape. And when you're doing this, look at the image. A final before and after. We have applied a really nice mood as well as this dark blue tone to the overall image. And that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I also created a Discord community for anyone who loves to talk photography or editing or anything creative. Feel free to join it. The link is in the descriptions as well. Have a good day, friends, and I'll see you guys in the next video.